Okay, hello everyone. It's Nicole Steele, the Joyful Stamper. And I'm gonna bring up my screen here. Same thing I always do every time I go live so I can see comments. Okay, there we go. So hello, hello. I feel like I've been gone forever even though it's only been a week. I don't know, with this shelter in place stuff, it seems like time just kind of like goes really slow, don't you think? But we're gonna do some happy today, some happy stamping. Look at this paper. Isn't that so cheerful? I, my upline, my team leader, my Stampin' Up! team leader, she sent us a challenge packet and I got the birthday bonanza one and so it had some of the ribbons, some of the paper in it and I hadn't gotten it. So this was the first time I got to use it. I used every last scrap. This, this is what I have left of the birthday bonanza paper. That's it. So I will show you all the projects I made with it today. That's what we're going to work with. So if you're popping on um, or you're watching the replay, I'm Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm the owner behind the Joyful Stamper. I have a website. I have an online store. Um, I have classes. I do these lives every Tuesday at 2 o'clock and say hi, comment, whatever. Feel free to add your two cents. That's what this is all about. Um, if you're watching the replay, I'll go back and look at the comments too because I know actually a lot of the views come from the replay and not the actual live. So some housekeeping. The next paper pumpkin kit, which is in May, is a sneak peek of the new in colors. So these are the in colors that are going to be introduced in the annual catalog and they'll be around for two years. So this flyer right now, you are not seeing things. It is in black and white because on April 24th is when Stampin' Up's going to reveal the new in colors that this paper pumpkin kit is going to be in. So if you want to be one of the first people to get your hands on those colors, make sure you subscribe to Paper Pumpkin and you can go to my store at shopwithnicole.stampinup.net and as long as you subscribe by May 10th, this is the kit that you're going to get. So I think it looks really interesting. I know one of the in colors because they introduced it in the Ornate Garden Suite, and that's Bumblebee, which is like this nice golden yellow. But I don't know what the other colors are gonna be. They're a mystery, okay? So go subscribe, you won't regret it. Then the next thing, of course, is the Ornate Garden Suite. That's what's been going on all month. On my blog all month, I've had a slew of projects that I have done with this beautiful suite, and I'm getting ready to do the next three and to post them. And the special I'm running is if you order $50 in my store before shipping and tax, I will send you the PDFs to make all the projects that I post on my blog in the month of April using this suite. So there's going to be at least 12 projects and they're not going to be your run of the mill stuff. I promise they're going to be stepped up cards, techniques, um, 3D projects. So it'll be fun. And it's a great suite to work with too. Okay. And the next thing tomorrow, why do I have this catalog out? Well, tomorrow the retirement list is coming out and sometimes it's a source of excitement for some. Sometimes it's a source of dread because people don't like saying goodbye to things and that's what the retirement list is. It means we're going to say goodbye to this catalog soon and we're going to usher in some new stuff. So tomorrow the list is coming out of everything in this catalog that is retiring and with the exception of stamps, because Stampin' Up! makes its own stamps, it's all WOW Supplies Lasts. So dies, WOW Supplies Lasts. Um, embellishments are going to be WOW Supplies Lasts. The ribbons, WOW Supplies Lasts. And the first things to go always are the outgoing in colors, which are these ones right here. Lovely Lipstick, Grapefruit Grove, Pineapple Punch, Call Me Clover, and Blueberry Bushel. So if you really liked that rainbow of color, those are the first things to sell out. The cardstock and the ink pads and ink refills especially. So that's what you'd want to get tomorrow if you have a favorite you just can't live without. So all the, all the designer series paper usually retires too. Um, so yeah, jump on it. Okay. Now, let's start our projects because my daughter has dance class down here at 3 o'clock and so I need to be out of here by then. 
This is the paper we're using. Remember, I didn't actually buy this paper. My team leader sent it to me as a challenge. So this is the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series paper that she sent me. It's on page 33 of the mini catalog, and it is stinking cute. So if you have little kids or grandkids or little nieces and nephews or, you know, kids that are in elementary school for class parties, I mean, this is really cute with the pom-poms and she sent me a bit of this ribbon and this is the stamp set and the coordinating dies. So the whole suite is called Birthday Bonanza. Now I don't have the stamp set, so everything I did today, I used the designer series paper for. So it would be really handy to have some paper snips nearby to recreate the projects that I'm going to show you. So let's get started. Okay, first one we're gonna do is this cute little koala. So when I was growing up, I was a brownie, and one of the prizes for selling the Girl Scout cookies one year was a stuffed koala. And I was really, really into koalas, and so I worked so hard so that I could sell enough boxes of cookies to get that stuffed koala, and I did it. I got it. And so now every time I see a koala, I think of that. Hard work paying off, right? So we're going to start with a five and a half or excuse me, five and a half by eight and a half piece of Coastal Cabana cardstock scored down the middle at four and a quarter. And you can use your bone folder to score it and to give it a nice crisp crease. Then I am going to take this, um, no, not perennial birthday. Sorry, let me pull out the one. Birthday background stamp set. And I am going to use the streamer image right here to make a little diagonal background on this card base. And I am going to use, let me see my notes. What color did I use? I used Coastal Cabana um, ink for that. And I remember I'm gonna do it diagonally down there. And then the th nice thing about these birthday background stamps is there's no right or wrong direction. So it's really easy to stamp a nice random pattern and not worry about if you're doing it right, so to speak. You can just be all loosey-goosey with it and go anywhere. So we've stamped that background. I already think that's looking fun. Then I've got some Mango Melody cardstock squares. Now, I die cut these with the layering squares dies, and I use the largest scalloped die that's in that pack. And I'm going to glue them kind of wonky on here, but I'm going to wait to do that so that I can position it properly with all my other elements. So then I have a piece of basic black cardstock that's going to go on top. And this is a piece of the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series paper. And you can see it's got two sides. One's got those balloons and one has these package gift packages. I'm going to use the gift packages and I'm going to put them there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is on this card, you can see I used a little koala bear. Well, what I'm gonna do on this next card that I'm making now, I'm gonna use a lion instead. So this is the back of that sheet of paper, and this is that. So you can fussy cut these, and that was my secret for getting around not having the stamp set, and that's why you need your paper snips, because I'm gonna fussy cut these images. And I'm going to get this one right here with the balloons. And now I know with some Stampin' Up! dies and designer series paper, you can use the dies to actually cut some of the image in the printed paper or on the printed paper for you. I don't know actually if that's the case with this particular suite and I didn't think to research that before I came on here live but um, I can't think of a specific one I think Dino Roar has some paper and dies and you can use the dies to cut out images from the paper and that's actually um, something fairly new that Stampin' Up! has started doing and it's been a huge hit there are a lot of people that don't like to fussy cut. I, I do, but you know what? As my family constantly tells me, I always do the opposite of what everyone else is doing. And I like the things that no one else likes. So, it stands to reason that I would like to fussy cut. But I know there are other people out there that fussy cut. I know they're out there. 
I gotta find my tribe. All right, let me cut that last little piece right there. Okay, see, that wasn't so bad. Not so bad. I like the back of this paper too. I didn't even really look at that. I was just looking at the lines, but yeah. Now I have a layering circle die cut that this is Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to use Bermuda Bay to stamp happy birthday. Now that happy birthday comes from this set right here, Wiggle Worm. And honestly, this is not a set I would have gotten for myself because I don't have little boys and I don't have little kids, but I want it as a prize from my um, team leader. And it was, it came in handy because you know what? My little nephew is, they call my, um, my brother and sister-in-law call him Bug. And in there it says cute as a bug and little bug. And so I made him a birthday card with it. Now I'm stamping this. Well, let me see. With the koala, I stamped it on the upper right of the circle. But this lion's balloons are in a different spot. So I'm going to actually stamp it over on the upper left. Let me make sure this is re inked enough. Oh, yeah. There's plenty of ink in there. So I made my little nephew a birthday card for his fifth birthday where it says, Happy Birthday, little bug on it. And my brother and sister-in-law told me he got the biggest kick out of it because the card had his name on it, right? Okay, now we're going to use some dimensionals to put our lion on here. And I'll put him over just like that. This koala also was cut from designer series paper and his little hat right there. And he's going to go on this card. So now I can go ahead and glue everything in place, except for there's one little thing I did, and I thought it added so much to this card. I took a um, journaling pen. Stampin' Up! sells these in sets of two, and they have two different points on them. And I took one of them, and I went around, and I just put little black dots on here. And I went all the way around it. I'll do that, finish that once I glue everything down. That way I won't have to do more than I need to. And I glued it, I glued um, the layers a little bit wonky on here just because I thought it seemed more fun. And I like to lay my other pieces down just so I can position them so I can make sure that I'm not covering things up that I don't want to cover up. Okay, that looks good. And we're gonna put that down. And now we have this piece, Birthday Bonanza. And I'm gonna put that down just a little bit crooked on the, on the basic black. So gluing your layers on like this is really good if you're somebody that struggles with gluing layers on straight. I know in Split Coast Stampers, which is a very popular stamping forum, there have been many times people ask, how in the world do you glue your layers on straight? They don't ask me. They just ask the question in the forum. And people give tips and stuff. Me, I'm like, just, just glue it on crooked as if you meant to do it. Then all your problems are solved. And now because I have my line on dimensionals, I'm going to use liquid glue to glue this circle down just so the card doesn't get too puffy because you don't want to make the post office angry. Some of them get a little twitchy when you bring in a card that's a little bit lumpy. But you could pay the extra postage. That would be fine, too. Now, I, um, my team leader also sent me a few of these basic rhinestones. They come in a much larger package than this, and they actually in several colors, but she just sent us a little square. These are the frosted white ones, and these are found in the annual catalog back in the embellishment section. I'm just going to add a couple... Um, just like that to my card. There we go. Oh, you like to fussy cut and color too, Jane? Yeah, it's, it's relaxing. And you can do this while you're watching TV. I mean, I don't know about you, but it's hard for me to just sit there and watch a TV program. I'd start getting a little restless. So having something to fussy cut or even to color while that's going on is helpful. 
I mean, I've been known to sit there and solve crossword puzzles while I'm watching TV. Now, Stranger Things, I was completely absorbed in. That had my attention from start to finish. And I can't wait for season four. Okay, so that was the journaling pen that I used to make this. So, ta-da! Aren't those cute? I never thought I would be a cutesy person like this, but I, I love this. This was fun paper. Okay, but we're not done, so let's move on to the next one. All right, and the next one is this. There's lots of color in this one. Maybe even too much color. I don't know. I don't know. Some people don't like it that busy. So we are going to start with clear my space. A lot of little pieces in this one, but very easy to put together. So this also is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of mango melody cardstock scored down the middle at four and a quarter. And you can use your bone folder to score it and crease it. Okay, so this card's going to go this way. Opening top like that and this is the strip of birthday bonanza paper I decided to use for this card so that's the spot side that I'm going to use this is the back side that I did not use and I think this is a five and a half by two inch piece so this paper comes in 12 by 12 I believe and I took the long skinny stitched rectangle die from the ornate lay layers die and I'm gonna stamp happy birthday on there in terracotta tile ink and my happy birthday greeting is coming from perennial birthday I wanted something nice and big to go to come almost completely fill that space this birthday here did the trick nicely so let's open up terracotta tile and ink it up and we're gonna stamp it um sort yeah in the middle the middle will work there looks good and we can put that terracotta tile away and now I'm gonna bring out mango melody because I want a background to my card so I'm gonna use pull out that birthday background stamp set again and this time I'm using this one I don't know what you would call those starbursts but I'm gonna stamp the top and bottom of my card and the reason I'm only doing the top and the bottom is because the middle is going to get covered up by all the other um, pieces to this card so there's no reason to stamp there okay so that was mango melody on mango melody cardstock tone on tone using a stamp from the birthday background set now I have a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock Slightly longer than the card, about two inches wide, and I'm going to tear that in half. Just like this. Now, see, this is another technique where you can't mess it up. So if you get nervous doing things on your card, just tear the paper and it'll look good. And we're going to glue this onto our card, and this is going to go over top of it like this. Okay? So what I like to do in that case is I'm going to put some snail adhesive on here. I'm going to run a line of it along the two long edges of this and then what I'll do is line this up on the edge like this and then I'll put it on the top here. Now the thing with snail is it's really it's a forgiving adhesive so if you don't quite get it the way you want it to the first time you can just pull it right back up and glue it down again reposition it okay so now I'm going to add some liquid glue to the back of this and glue that in the middle section of my card there just like that and then I'm gonna take my paper snips and I'm gonna open my card up and trim off this extra that's hanging over And there we have that little decorative piece. I like what the torn cardstock does for this card. I originally left it off and it looked kind of naked. And I don't want a naked card. So then I cut out these little critters. So I, I don't know what kind of bird he is. 
but he was on one of the sheets, as was the koala. This little guy's wearing a little party hat this time, and they're going to go on either side of my card like this. And this happy birthday is going to go here. All three of these elements are going to be using dimensionals to glue them on. And I'm going to put three of them across the back of this because in addition to not liking a naked card, I don't like a saggy card. Saggy is bad, right? We want our greetings to stand up. Be alert. There's too many other places in life for sag, right? <laughs> we don't want it on our card. Okay. And we're going to put this little guy. I still don't know what he is. Is he one of those birds that talk? They repeat what you say? Toucan? Maybe? I don't know. But, oh, isn't he stinking cute? Ooh, I like him. Okay, now let's take this same sequence again. And I thought it'd be fun to add some to the middle of these starbursts there. So, let's get crazy with the sequins. Don't be stingy when you're putting your embellishments on your card either. Don't hoard your pattern paper. Don't hoard your embellishments. Put them on the card. I can't tell you how many people have said that they've had to clean out a craft room from somebody and there's so many things in there that were in the packages brand new, never used. That's so sad. We need to use them all up. I've actually used an entire package of, um, I don't know what you want to call it, bling, whatever, on a card before. Because you know what? You can always buy more. You can always buy more. It is a toucan. All right. Thanks for telling me that, Jane. <laughs> I think this is what gave it away. I had a flashback to, what is it, Toucan Sam? From Fruit Loops or something. So this is Daffodil Delight Ruched Ribbon. You can see the little ruches in there. And I'm using a glue dot to stick it on there just like that. And then I'm going to trim the bow down because the tails are a little longer than I want them to be. Okay. And that is card number two. These are so fun and so easy to make. And all I did was cut the main images out of the same pack of paper that I used to cut pieces for my card. So these aren't the only things I did with the birthday bonanza paper that my team leader sent me. I'm going to show you the other projects too. And I'm actually going to write up tutorials for all of these so you'll be able to recreate them. Okay, so this one I saw in the mini catalog and they used different colors but I loved the layout of it. And so I had to make it. I love how they're peeking out of their little cubby holes. That is so sweet. So I used some of the Birthday Bonanza Designer Series paper behind my main panel of Mango Melody. And I cut a bunch of these guys out and put them on here with dimensionals. This is a piece of vellum that I heat embossed with black embossing powder. The um, Here's to Celebrating You, which that's also in the perennial birthday set. Now, layering circles dies are what was used to create these circles, but here's a trick for getting them to evenly space. Ahead of time, die cut the size of circle that you want to have in your piece of cardstock. Okay, so like this is the positive space and this is what's left behind after you die cut it out. Well, then you can take that and you can just put a little bit of snail on the back, just enough to lightly hold it to your cardstock and just lay the pieces down and then you'll know where to position your die. So like you lay these down, trace around it with a pencil, and then you can pull these off, and then you'll have the lightly penciled circle mark of where to put that circle die so you can run it through your die cutting machine. And I've tried not doing it that way before, and what happens is my, my, the way they're aligned gets off because I didn't judge and leave myself enough room down here, whatnot, so they get off. So Cutting the circles out ahead of time, positioning them, tracing them with a pencil before you run it through your die cut machine will save you some cardstock and it will keep things in line for you. Okay, so that's project number three. Project number four 
is this one right here. I had some leftover scraps, little skinny strips. So I just took a bunch of them, the different patterns, and I cut them to different widths and thicknesses, and I just kind of laid them down in a haphazard pas pattern. Fussy cut another koala bear. This is also from the perennial birthday set, heat embossed in white on basic black cardstock. I die cut a stitched circle, put some silver metallic um, thread behind them for a little nest and I added some more of those sequins around there and there's a little strip of vellum going down there to sort of set him off from the busy patterns in the background there. Really cute, huh? Okay, then I have another one. This is a 3D project. So this is a little birthday treat bag. Now I made a bag like this, I don't know how long ago, maybe like four weeks ago, but it didn't have this top. It was, it was open. But this opens and closes with Velcro. And it's pretty roomy in there. But the sides are pinched in just to give it a little more decorative flair. And I, again, I cut out the toucan, the greeting still from perennial birthday. And I ran out of that daffodil um, delight ruched ribbon. So I had, to, I had to use some retired daffodil delight ribbon for this, but I think it'll be okay, right? And this is Grapefruit Grove on Smoky Slate. I used the layering squares die with the largest scalloped one for that. So, and I'm actually going to make this version, uh, another version of this using the Ornate Garden Suite. So it's going to be like a little, a little vintage version of it with some flowers. But this one is really fun. I mean, you could put a gift card in there with, with a treat. Birthday party favors, class party favors. These are really fast to make. And then... My final project with this paper, and this was the ultimate because these were truly the last of my scraps, let me tell you. This one's a little bit funky because I was down to literally just these last few pieces of paper and I was determined not to throw them out. I was going to make it work. So I went a little funky collage with this one. This is Thick Whisper White, and I cut my scraps into just... I don't know, random rectangles. I truly did not measure these. I just cut them with a trimmer and I laid them out on here like a puzzle until I was happy with it. Then I tore a piece of vellum on the diagonal and I took some ba uh, basic black baker's twine and I pulled the strands apart so that I got that. So I didn't know if you knew you could do this or not, but this is, it comes on the spool like this, but you can take these and you can just start to pull them apart like that and you get a thinner version of it. And I made a little nest of that and also used the silver metallic thread to make a nest. This Hello Friend is from Seriously the Best stamp set embossed in white on black cardstock and fussy cut around it with paper snips. Stuck all that on with dimensionals and then I don't know if you could see these clear epoxy hearts, but I, they come in three different sizes in the same package and I stuck a bunch of those on. And then I used my journaling pen same one I used to make those dots on my card, the card back here, those dots. I took that same pen and just sketched quick doodle lines outlining those. Yep. So <laughs> I was determined to use everything. I set that challenge for myself and I did it because I had nothing left. So those are all the projects I made with the little sample of birthday bonanza paper that my upline sent me and look I even made two of those and I'm gonna remember I'm gonna do an ornate garden version of this one um, for tom either tomorrow or Thursday I'll have it but this was so much fun um, I hope you like it make sure to check back tomorrow because the retirement list is going to be out I will have it on my blog and if you're a newsletter subscriber that will be going out in an email to you um, I have my Timeless Tropical class still going on. This is the last week to get the class kits sent to you. That's also on my blog, and there's a Buy Now button on there because it's it's the kit components. It doesn't have the stamp set or the dies with it. So you just hit Buy Now, and it's ready to ship. Eight projects. Timeless Tropical. It's really fun. And uh, what else? I think that's it. So, I don't know. Make sure you follow me on Facebook. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Subscribe to my newsletter. And I will see you guys next Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.